And we begin tonight with the president of the San Francisco Police Commission, Teresa Sparks. Thank you for being with You're us. You're welcome. I uh, mentioned to you that I watched the entire June, uh, July 11th meeting on uh -huh. video, and they were presenting the crime statistics to you. And I think you and I reached the same point of, of, of annoyance with uh, the whole situation at the same point in the, as I watched you. I was getting more and more frustrated by the the almost uh, detachment people have to the violence <coughs> that's on the streets. Uh, you know, I, I actually reached two points of frustration, and it's pretty consistent with my dealings with the department. One is uh, it's very difficult to get information as a police commissioner, and I'm president of the police commission, so one would think it would be relatively easy for me. Um, and but I have to write. I have to ask exactly the right question to get information. And so sometimes uh, it's it's very difficult to get the information. And then of course with the homicides, mm -hmm. uh, that's very frustrating as well. But you have to keep in mind those statistics uh, are really taken out of context uh, with the whole situation, the whole issue of violent crime, for instance, shootings. Uh, if in fact uh, there were less skillful trauma surgeons at SF General, the homicides might be up higher than, than we're showing on this, than the 56 you or 57. Up. You brought that and up. You brought that up. And so it's, it's a very difficult situation. In other words, someone, the shootings are up. You, 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 I didn't have these stats because I went prepared by going to the FBI site. We don't, I don't have those, but you seem to have some idea that the shootings have really gone up. Maybe people are not dying from them, but they're either being missed or being injured. But the fact is there's a lot more of gun violence like that, violence with guns and knives, than just the homicide rate. Well, and my information is primarily anecdotal because I, I've actually heard the statistic a couple of times, but I, I can't quite honestly, and I tried to find it last night and I couldn't find it, but it was my understanding that gun violence has doubled since 2004 in San Francisco. And so if you look at the statistics, mm -hmm. you see since 2004, the homicides are relatively static. They are. Um, may, maybe up or down one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're looking at maybe, uh, and again, I'm going to throw out some numbers, 100 or 200 versus 100 shootings or, or some order of magnitude like that. Right. And so shootings, it's my understanding, are up substantially. And conceivably, homicides could be way up, too, if it wasn't for, you know, the circumstances. And also... What came out in that report and has been shown by the results at General Hospital is a lot more stabbings, which means it, it was interpreted in the presentation to you that stabbings imply more random uh, anger, emotionally based violence because it's uh, you know some, two people get in a scuffle and they're maybe carrying knives and and there's a a, a a battle. Is that true? Well, you know I'm not a law enforcement professional. I'm a civilian, and, and what I try to do is make sure that the citizens of San Francisco get the right information. Get the information. First. First. Well, at some point. Let's, yeah. let's start there. Yeah. Uh, but We're going to get into the problem and solution, though. But, yeah. but, I, but I'm also, I think my frustration is, is, is the same frustration a lot of other people think. As far as knife, I, I don't know what causes a knife. A knife a stabbing versus a, a, a gun violence? Is it because it's it's on the spur of the moment? I, I don't know. We also have a category called disputes, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what disputes really means. I asked that question. Does it mean gang turf? Does it mean uh, you're you know you're you're mad at each other because of a property boundary dispute? I don't know what disputes well, we, mean either. We do know, thanks to the efforts both of the uh, feds and the local uh, police enforcement, that that gang crime is actually down significantly. Right. What we're talking about, and, and in aggravated assaults, we, uh, it was up from 2,600 to 4, 20, uh, actually, actually aggravated assaults was down slightly in San Francisco, but robberies are up significantly, and, and the, to the total category of violent crime, which is the four basic categories, that is up in San Francisco, down in L.A., down in San Diego. In other words, and, and more importantly, I think you sense there's a sense of unsafety in the streets right now. People do not feel secure in the streets. You know, I go to community meetings a lot, maybe twice a week, um, and the public safety is a big, big issue. People, uh, I think the statistic is over 50 percent of the people are afraid to go out in their own neighborhood after dark in San Francisco. And so, uh, you know, and, and, I, and my contention is part of that is they really don't know where this violence is occurring. 
They don't know if it's all in the Bayview. They don't know if it's all in the Western Edition. They don't know if it's happening in the Marina. It happened in North Beach the other day. It was terrible. And and so the question is, is where is it occurring and, and why is it occurring? But, but, but what are we doing about it? Okay, before we go there, and that's what I did want to talk to you about, is one of the things I got from the presentation that was made to you last night is that with as especially with regards to homicides, it's a myth to think that it's happening in the Bayview and the Hunters Point. It was actually, he had little dots for all of the different mm -hmm. uh, uh, homicides. And the, and the bulk is, is really in the ten, um, Tenderloin South Market, uh, spread around uh, around that area there. But, it, you know, it's a myth to think that, oh, no, the violence is in the southeast part of the city. We don't have to worry about no, it. No, the violence is in, uh, is in the Western Edition. The violence is in the Tenderloin. The violence is in South of Market. And if you look at the overlay of drug drug arrests, mm -hmm. uh, narcotics arrests, if you overlay that with homicides, it's almost in the same area. And the, the, the amount of, of, of narcotics arrests within the South of Market and Tenderloin area is staggering. It's staggering. And anybody that walks through the Tenderloin can understand why, because you can't go a block in the Tenderloin without going past three drug dealers. And uh, that's very, very frustrating to me. I was going to make the, I had I had this thing planned for you, Teresa, called the Wheel of Crime, and it was going to be a graphic, but I didn't do it. But I'm going to pretend it's here. But you know, when we go around, and you were getting into this, when you go around the lazy Susan here, well, it's the district attorney doesn't prosecute crimes. The uh, the police are at their desk; they're not in their cars out there. The uh, we need to have social uh, social improvement in education and welfare and so on. And uh, the police commission is harassing the police too much. And the OCC is harassing the police. Around we go. Around we go. What is it? This was your question last night. And you asked it several times ahead of the phone. What are we going to do about it? Well, and, and the frustration. I, go to a, I go, went to a community meeting last week. And the district attorney's representative was there. The police representative was there. Uh, and they asked the question, how are you going to stop prostitution on Larkin Street? Simple question. How are you going to stop prostitution on Larkin? And this isn't Tenderloin Larkin. This is, this is California to Clay Larkin. This is mid Larkin. This is middle Polk Street. Right. This, this is in that area. And how are you going to stop it? Um, and the police say, well, you know, we, we arrest these people and the district attorney won't prosecute them. The prosecutors say, well, we prosecute them, but the judges let them off. And the judges say, we give them a jury trial and the people of San Francisco set them free. <laughs> so the people I are, forgot the jury. So right. the people are sitting there going, wait a minute, what? going on. Somebody needs to take responsibility for this. And, and in my opinion, there's really only one central point that the responsibility should be taken, and that's with the administration. Administration? With the mayor's office. Well, I didn't want, you know, this program had become so much a, a battery ram for uh, poor Gavin Newsom that I stopped doing that. I like Gavin but Newsom. I endorse I, Gavin I, Newsom, and I, I help get him to Gavin Newsom elected. But, and I'm not saying Gavin Newsom. I'm saying there's only really one, one yes. group, one, one individual, one one area in the city government that really has influence over all those sectors. The uh, w the cities of America are that way. Mm -hmm. Strong mayors determine the condition of the city's streets and its economy. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Uh, that is a s well. <laughs> you've answered the question. I uh, I tend to agree. I think that we're reaching a point. This is remember a lot of the viewers here are are new to San Francisco, but that's precisely how Frank Jordan was elected mayor because we had reached this point where the, the people wanted a retired police uh, chief to be mayor of their city. Are we reaching, are we reaching that point consciously in, in the minds of San Franciscans that, that uh, there's a crisis? Or do people still believe it's just a tremendous annoyance, something I have to deal with when I go out at night? <clears throat> you know, I don't think people realize it's a crisis. I think the people in law enforcement uh, at least know there's a problem, whether they call it a crisis or not. Joe Marshall, who's on the commission with me, who's a, a renowned expert mm -hmm. on, on African-American and youth <coughs> violence, calls it a crisis. He calls it a public health crisis because, this is a, because these kids are dying on the streets. These kids are getting shot and dying on the streets. Uh, the people of San Francisco, I think, somehow have become desensitized, desensitized to it. You know, it's kind of like Iraq. You hear there's 3,000 or 3,200 people killed in Iraq, and you go, well, 3,200. It's like Vietnam used to be. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, people hear, well, it's our 56th homicide. People go, well, that's too bad. You know, uh, people need to pay closer attention, I think, and people need to demand some kind of, of measured or, or, or response to, to, to quell this violence. And well, I, don't know if, I don't know if they're alarmed or not. I think they're alarmed with public safety overall. 
Okay. <coughs> well, you answered honestly for me when I asked the question. I'm going to ask it again. Uh, we did that round robin. I did forget the juries that, that acquit the uh, criminals mm -hmm. if they ever get to court in the first place. And are you saying there's nothing we can do except ha to have a, a strong mayor that puts his foot down, hi hires or the police chief is a reflection of the mayor. Uh, and Heather Fong is a, 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 one of the most decent people in, on the force. I'm not sure uh, from watching, and I'm ex I've expressed this before on the program, so it's not new. Not w when watching the program, I found her to be, uh, let's put it this way. If you were in the military and you had your leading ch uh, chief of command there, you want him to be strong, you want him to have the answers, even though he may not believe he's going to win the war. When I watched that interview last night, when you were asking questions of the chief, I didn't get the impression she knew what, to, what the answer is either. Uh, uh, she went off on certain directions. Uh, what? In other words, are you saying we have to wait for a whole new administration before we see any no, change? No, I, I don't think streets? so. I don't think so. And, and to a certain extent, uh, I think people are looking at Chief Fong within the context of very strong male chief of police and leadership, very outgoing, very, very dominant. And there's no question Heather Fong has a different type of way she Sorry. interacts with people. You know, she, she has a more, a more measured, uh, a maybe a little gentler approach to some of these things as opposed to a Fagan or a Earl Sanders or some of these other people we've had. Um, and, but no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think the, uh, the people should bring political pressure to bear on the district attorney, on the mayor, on the politicians, on their supervisors to come up with an answer. I can't sit here and tell you I know the answer. I'm not a professional, I, and, and I don't pretend to be, but little simple things, like I've asked the chief now twice, once in private, once in public session, to elevate the commander of, of the violent crime unit, or of the, hum, of the vice unit, to a commander level instead of a captain, to put greater emphasis on violent crime. Mm -hmm. So far, she's decided not to do that. I can't force her to do it, because that's not my mandate. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I have done, though, is asked her, and, and, and it's been a little more of a request than a request, is she will start producing in two weeks uh, violent crime data for every neighborhood in the city. And I think we're doing it by 65 or 66 neighborhoods. So rather than a general violent crime statistic for a, an entire area, mm -hmm. you'll know what it is in North Beach versus Chinatown versus Broadway Corridor versus Rushnell versus Knob Hill across the city. I'm hoping what that'll do is make people in these neighborhoods go and wait a minute, you know, we, we, we don't feel safe and we need to have, we need to do something about this and start putting political pressure, political will, which translates into money, which translates into budget. And, but, they're giving me the one minute signal, well, uh, we didn't expect to solve the problem in, in 15 minutes. Um, do you think uh, that there's, do you think the police are demoralized by all those factors, whether it's a district attorney that doesn't prosecute or crimes that don't get uh, brought to court or, or acquitted in court and so on? Do you think that uh, they're still out there pounding away knowing that the likelihood of arrests uh, are uh, mean, be meaningful or I got do. 30 seconds? I do. And I think, I'll, I want to make this very clear, I think this is one of the finest police departments in the United States, the rank and file, the people on the street. I think they care, they're well trained, and they do their job. But yeah, they're frustrated, they're demoralized, they're frustrated, and they're angry, and we need to support them in, in, in bringing justice and bringing these people to justice. Okay. President of the Police Commission, Teresa Sparks, thanks for being here. You're welcome. And uh, stay with us. We'll be right back.